Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains, I'm your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Today is September 13th. This is Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural Report. Very special announcement today, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsor, Noble Gold. Have you ever heard of shrinkflation? That's right, shrinkflation. That is where your candy bar or your burger gets smaller, but the price stays the same, right? Have you noticed this? It's happening all the time, everywhere now. But the government insists that inflation's under control, or that it's just temporary. But what do you think? (laughs) Exactly. This is just inflation by the back door. Noble Gold is ahead of the game here. They know that with precious metal, an IRA under your belt, you'll hedge these rising prices so that you can retire without worrying about it. You'll keep up with the inflation the folks in Washington are trying to hide. And this month, to thank you and to get your precious metal project off to a flying start, Noble Gold is giving away a free Five ounce solid silver, America the Beautiful bullion coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover. Folks, now's the time to do it. www.noblegoldinvestments.com or call us at 877-646-5347. That's noblegoldinvestments.com or please give them a shout out at 877-646-5347. Four, seven. The announcement is simply this. We will no longer discuss anything political on this show. In fact, I'm, I'm in the process of completely changing it, maybe using another set. I don't know. Uh, the reason for this is <clears throat> the censorship. The moment I begin to talk about what's on my mind, uh, we get a strike or we're censored or whatever. If you want the full Monty, and you know, it's amazing. Uh, We've got almost 140,000 subscribers here. It's taken us years to build this type of a following. And yet some anonymous censor can just give us a strike and off we go. So to play the game, we will no longer discuss anything political, which is a real bummer because that's just how what you got to do if you want to stay on YouTube. And we want to stay on YouTube because we value uh, the people that come here. And we think we have something important to say. So we're going to be talking about Armor Trail of a Nephilim and UFO Update. Both of those things combined together. So I may call the show something completely different at this point. I'm not sure. If you have any suggestions, uh, please shoot them over to me. But we'll still be doing PPS Report, Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural Report on Rumble, BitChute, and of course Roku. But the migration over to those sites is very minimal. So... Please consider getting our app by going to lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net, and download the app. Never miss another show. Meantime, two different shows. The show on YouTube will be on the Trail of a Nephilim, which basically we've, we've been chronicling this in our film series. And, of course, UFO Report, which I think you'll find interesting. Hopefully that will whet your appetite and you'll still hang with us. So that's the announcement. Moving right along, Episode 7, Lost Civilizations. There they are. You can download them all by going to streaming.lamarzuli.net, streaming.lamarzuli.net. So what I want to circle back into once again, I'm not, I'm not going to leave this because it's so important. Look, we talked about this last week, Genesis 3.15. That, in my opinion, that scripture, in my opinion, sets up the rest of the biblical prophetic narrative. I mean, it just does. And unless we come to a full understanding of the Genesis 3.15 narrative, when we get to other passages, we don't know, there's no grid system for us to process those other passages. So Genesis 3.15 simply states this, and the, the, uh, <laughs> the motif or whatever in the garden, you've got the pre-incarnate Christ, the dragon, the serpent, and then over here, you've got Adam and Eve. And the pre-incarnate Christ says this to the dragon, you, your seed, your offspring will be at war and enmity with the offspring of the woman. The offspring coming from the woman, he will crush your head, you will bruise his heel. That sets up the rest of the biblical narrative. And unless we come to terms with that and understand what it really means, 
when we get to, and I've, I've talked about this numerous times, but I have to say it again, why new people come here? And I'm setting up what I'm going to talk about today by talking about Genesis 3.15. The serpent, the seed of the serpent, the offspring of the serpent versus the offspring of the woman. Now, that's not taught in many seminaries. In fact, people rail against it and insist that that can't possibly happen. Yet the early church fathers believed in it. The Jewish rabbis believed in it. And it's there. The historical record, it's there. Read Josephus, where he talks about the Nephilim, the giants that were in the land when Israel conquered it thousands of years ago. Look, this narrative is that important, which is why in some ways I've kind of trying to reshape the show into something which I think fits my wheelhouse maybe a little bit better for, for at least YouTube and some other platforms. So with that in mind, we know that there's going to be someone coming from the seed, the offspring of the woman, which is going to crush the dragon's head. Dragon doesn't like that. Three chapters later, Genesis 6, right? The sons of God, the B'nai Ha Elohim, saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and took women, took wives from whoever they chose. And it's multiple. That's why in, in, our, in our newest book, How the Nephilim Returned After the Flood, it's really an important read. Some people say it's the most important book I've ever written. I don't know. I can't possibly be the judge. But I'll tell you this. It took me uh, over two years to write it and talk to my editor, Sonda Allison. It was like yanking teeth. Very difficult book to write. So here's the deal. Who is the prince of the power of the air? Three chapters later, the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. When? When the sons of God took wives, had sex with the women, and the offspring became a Nephilim. And I'm not going to get into that today of, of how they returned. And I'm not trying to plug the book, although it'd be great if you bought it. But, but I will get into that at some point because it's very germane to our discussion here. So going back to this, this is a serpent mound, all right? It's in Ohio. It's the largest serpent that undulates over the landscape in the pla on the planet. Now, when I was there, I, I, didn't, I had just come back from Peru, seeing all these megaliths and just being astounded by them, specifically Saxio, Mano, Tentambo, other places. And I'm here looking at this going, well, this, I don't get this. And I didn't get it until I saw this clip. And I'm going to show it to you right now. So we can see that we're flying the drone over the Great Serpent Mound. Who is the prince of the power of the air? And why is it that you, you really can't see, you don't even understand what you're looking at until you're high above it? Now, the drone there is probably about 60, 70 feet up. Watch what happens when I pop the drone further up and you really get a bird's eye view and you can see the entire undulation of the serpent. Another shot of it right there. And once again, when, when you're, when you see these pathways like right here, there's an asphalt pathway and on the other side. So when you're walking on that and you read the signage, you, you, don't, you don't understand. Well, what am I looking at here? This makes no sense. Now watch what happens when we pop the drone up. On this crisp winter's day, there's the tower right there. It's about two stories up so you can get an idea of what you're looking at. Now, see, now, now we're starting to climb up. And you can now start to see what we're looking at here. The scope of this entire, that's the first real shot. You can see the tail coil, and then the serpent undulates over this little peninsula that sticks out over, over this creek, this river right here. Even a better shot of it. Who is the prince of the power of the air? And why is it that you can only appreciate what you're looking at when you're high above it. When you're down on the ground, this makes no sense at all. And here's something else. How would you check your work? How would you check your work? How would you know that this thing is, is what you want it to be? I want to circle back to this here and show you this shot. And I'm just going to stop and pause here. Look right above. The serpent's mouth is wide open in the act of swallowing an egg. Now, New Agers insist that the serpent now is the serpent denotes wisdom and it's giving birth to wisdom in the form of an egg. First of all, serpents don't birth anything 
<laughs> through their mouth, number one. Number two, this hails back, in my opinion, to Genesis 3.15. This is a totally different paradigm, a totally different look at what the serpent mound is. Why is it? And how would you, how would you construct something like this where we know that the, the, the coils of the serpent correspond to um, the equinoxes and the solstices? Right there. How, how would you check your work? Unless you're high above it. Well, yeah, it could have built three-story um, towers out of logs. Okay, I get that. They could have done that. But even then, even then when you're only up, you know, 30, 40 feet in the air, you don't get the entire, you don't get the full Monty. You don't really understand what it is that's on the Ohio landscape. And once again, I'll go here and I'll just right to there where, where, we, where the drone pulls up. And then you can really start to see what it is you're looking at. In my opinion, in my opinion, this screams Genesis 3.15. This is what we're looking at. What is it doing in Ohio? What is it doing in Ohio? Chief Joseph had an interesting um, remark on this, a speculative conjecture on his part. He believes that this undulating serpent at one point in time could have been dressed with mica. So this whole mica would shine, would reflect the sunlight. So this must have been the shining one, Nakash. And hats off to Dr. Mike Kaiser, who brought that to the forefront uh, many, many years ago. But other commentators have talked about Nakash, but it was really Heiser in, in modernity, in, in the present day, that brought that to light to the body of Christ. Bully for him. So here's the bottom line. If that's true... Can you imagine how this thing must have looked with the sunlight reflecting the shining one, the shining one, Nakash? So all that's incredibly interesting. In my opinion, Native Americans did not engage in this. They did not build it. The Shawnee Chief Joseph Wallace said on the record that the Shawnee didn't build the serpent mound. Then she flip flops. So which is it? Here's the deal. <clears throat> and today this is a quote from the Smithsonian. And I talked about this last week. But again, if, if Native Americans didn't do this, then who is the prince of the power of the air? There is a hidden history which has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. I'm going to read you the quote now. Today, the Smithsonian Institution spokesman may not agree for politically correct reasons, but after the study of its researches a century ago, so more than 100 years ago, when they, when they started looking at this, they realized something was up. It didn't fit the narrative of Native Americans. And so they said this. These people over 100 years ago concluded that a civilization of higher order than Native American were responsible for the ancient copper mining and the building of what we see in the Great Serpent Mound here. Who is the prince of the power of the air? In my opinion, this is Nephilim architecture, fallen angel technology. Is that conjecture? It would be conjecture, except site after site after site that we see paint a completely different picture of what we are told. I'll say it again and close this section by stating this. There is a hidden history which has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. This is why we are on the trail of the Nephilim. For those of you just joining us, Reynoldsham Forest happened in England. That's where it is. There was a military base there, a joint military base, U.S. personnel and um, U.K. personnel. And this guy had an encounter. Other people were with him. They had an encounter. A craft landed. He saw an entity um, appear. All sorts of high strangeness happened. So let's pick it up from there. That pulled, flew from Germany onto uh, Bentwaters Airfield, not Woodbridge, Bentwaters. And it was handed to the pilot. Canopy closed and the plane took off. Now, what he's talking about here is they had film of this of the of the UFO, and it was handed to the pilot, and it wound up in Washington. Let's continue. So, our government knows about this. They knew about it back then. And Mike Morano asked, "Where's the plane going?" And they said, "To Germany." What we also know at some point, this has been lost in time, is that that footage was flown to Washington D.C after it was in Germany. A lot of our command people showed up and did witness all this. Um, I passed a lie detector on it. I'm hungry. 
that test is very accurate. Yeah. So, and also the other thing about this, Larry, is it can't tell the difference between a big lie and a little lie. So even if you lie a little bit, you'll still get the same failed results. So that's why I always say to people, if there's anything you need to tell me that isn't truthful in this, tell me now, because otherwise you will fail, even on a little lie. Fine. So it's amazing. This They're showing the lie detector test. It's really cool. Okay, ready to go do it? So they hook them all up. And she begins to ask the questions. A reenactment of what this man saw. And so let's move on from there. The bottom line is he passes the lie detector test. What he saw, he's telling the truth. Now, how many witnesses like this do we have to bring forward? How many people, this is why we made our film, uh, Disclosure, <clears throat> UFO Disclosure, The Coming Great Deception of Luciferian Endgame. This came up over the weekend. This was filmed in China. This huge light object, you can see it here, give you an idea. This is more of a close-up of it. But look at this. I mean, what are, this is high strangeness. We don't even know what this is. I mean, I can't even get my head around it. Look, I'm going to go into prophecy here. The biblical prophetic narrative states that the dragon will come with all signs and lying wonders. Is this a, is this a lying wonder? Is this some sort of a sign? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it is that, that they're looking at here. I do know this, that we're seeing more and more high strangeness as the days go by. And the fact that the Pentagon is admitting vehicles not made on this earth, pray tell, where are they made? More importantly, who are making it? Prophecy, written thousands of years ago, stated by none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus, for those of you who are Christians and watching this. Even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. Something is coming, which will be so overwhelming, it will deceive the masses. Even the elect, if that were possible, which is why we do this every day. Because I truly believe that these are not friendly ETs from Zeta Reticuli. Why do I say that? Cattle mutilations. And maybe we'll get into cattle mutilations here. Um, look at the abduction phenomena. Look at the implant phenomena. All these are related directly to UFOs. Directly. Think about uh, Betty and Barney Hill who were abducted. They were terrified. They were terrified. Think about Al Matthews, the centerpiece of our film, UFO Disclosure. Al was abducted numerous times. He had an encounter with a hybrid woman that totally changed his life. Folks, UFOs are real, burgeoning, not going away. I would admonish you, please, download the film. Watch the film. It's free. There's so much information in that film. It's imperative that you watch it. Thanks so much for watching the new politics prophecy of a supernatural report. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. Maybe I'll just call it the supernatural report. Maybe I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. If you've got any suggestions, please shoot me an email, la at lamarzulli.net. If you've got UFO clips or stories like that, please shoot me pictures. Give me an email at la at lamarzulli.net. Thanks so much for watching. I'm not sure what we're going to call the show. Maybe The Supernatural Report right here on YouTube. Thanks. We'll see you again. Remember, we'll see you on the air or in the air. Thanks for watching. There is an ancient site in New Hampshire that may date back 4,000 years. It is called America's Stonehenge. There are precise alignments of standing stones which reflect the solstices and equinoxes. There is also a controversial stone table which may have been used as an altar for human sacrifice. The site is built on an 18 and a half year lunar cycle like that of Stonehenge, England, and also the Great Circle Mount and the Octagon Mount complex in Ohio. At America Stonehenge, massive stones were fitted together to create this mysterious site, but whoever built it seemingly abandoned it. You will see just how incredible this site is as we reveal what appears to be a deliberate and orchestrated relationship to Stonehenge, England, as well as other megalithic sites around the globe. Journey with us as we explore America's Stonehenge.